Hello, everyone. Good morning. Uh, my name is Craig O'Neill, as Jake said. I am the Director for Business Development for FLIR's Optical Gas Imaging Portfolio. I'm also in charge of our solutions for the oil and gas industry. And so what we're going to talk a little bit about today is mostly optical gas imaging, or OGI, uh, as it's commonly referred to in the industry. And really, since we've been involved in this market, the first optical gas imaging, or OGI, camera was made in 2005 commercially. And that one, and in, in, in that amount of time since we've been involved, we've seen a huge change in that industry and the communities where that industry plays. And, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about how that change may initiate some smart city uh, opportunities within FLIR, and so with a, with the a FLIR city. But the, before we get into that, I want to just talk about optical gas imaging. What is optical gas imaging? Simply put, in, in most basic terms, as Jake stole my thunder a little bit, uh, it is seeing the invisible. It is taking a gas that to you and I and our visible light and, and, in, and with a visible light camera is completely invisible and making it visible and being able to visually see that. So we make various different cameras, and we're going to have a camera today that's going to see carbon dioxide. But we make different cameras for different gases. So I'm just curious, just raise your hand, are there any gases that you would think we may have heard industry say, you know what, I'd like to see that type of gas? Yeah. Methane, yes, Les. It, methane is one of the most common natural resources in particular here in the United States, uh, and it is a very popular, uh, you know, is a very, is probably the most common gas that we get asked to see. We actually recently came out with a new technology. We cut the cost of optical gas imaging cameras in about half specifically for visualizing methane leaks. Any other gases you think we might have? Yes. Nitrogen. Nitrogen is a bit challenging to visualize because 78% of what we see around us is nitrogen, so we would just get a black screen. Oh, hydrogen. Yes, sorry, I couldn't understand. Hydrogen is a bit different, and hydrogen is the main use for this CO2 camera. We'll actually inject carbon dioxide, which is another gas we're asked to see quite often. We'll actually inject hydrogen uh, uh, carbon dioxide at about two or about three to five percent in a hydrogen-operated facility so that they can utilize our handheld cameras to visually look for that, that hydrogen, but they're really seeing small traces of carbon dioxide. So we're, uh, as I mentioned, we're going to do a quick experiment. I want to show you the invisible. I want to allow you to see on something that is just an everyday thing that you may use, the invisible. So what, we're, what I have here today is just a common soda stream. This is just a common uh, device that many of you may have in your homes today to make water maybe a little bit uh, bubbly, uh, a little bit better tasting, to add a little bit of flavor, if you will, flair to your soda. But I'm going to do a little different today. I'm going to utilize this without liquid. So if you walk outside and it's raining, guess what? You can see water. So I, I don't want to be able to use that. If I had water in here and poured it out, I'd make a mess and my bosses would get mad. But the reality is it doesn't help show you the invisible. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this, this actual soda stream uh, container up uh, with with carbon dioxide. Now you'll notice the cameras behind me. Um, you may even be able to see me breathing. It's a little challenging at this distance because I don't have a whole lot of carbon dioxide coming out, but I do have a little bit and that helps me know that I'm alive. So I'm simply going to do the same thing that I would do inside of my, uh, inside of my house if I want to make this in carbon dioxide. Now if you look at, me, uh, at the camera behind me, you'll be able to see this gas pouring out of this bottle. But if you look at me, you can't see anything. I can't feel this gas. I can't taste this gas. Carbon dioxide doesn't. If it had a bad taste, most people would probably not use a lot of soda streams. Uh, so again, with this technology, you're able to visually see gases that to us are completely invisible. Now, as we roll back over to the presentation, I do want to talk a little bit uh, about FLIR, some of FLIR's missions and some of FLIR's statements. One of FLIR's mission statements is that we are the world's sixth sense. But what's a sixth sense? If I, talk to, if I look up uh, Merriam-Webster and say, what is a sixth sense? Very simply put, it's a keen intuitive power. They also say it's a sense not of the other five senses. I just thought that was a cheap way to get out of a definition. But the six, a, a sixth sense is a keen intuitive power. Well, we have our own definition of what a sixth sense is for FLIR. We are the world's sixth sense. And what that definition is, is we have superpower vision that allows our customers and allows you to save lives. We have superpower vision that allows people to protect the environment, that allows people to see the invisible to be able to stop gas leaking in the atmosphere. We have superpower vision that allows our customers to enhance productivity 
in the oil and gas market and this optical gas imaging, if they could keep that gas in the pipeline, they would be able to enhance their own productivity. It would help them in their, uh, in their own accord. Now, as we talk about this, uh, uh, different, um, if we talk about different senses, a lot of times you don't use each sense altogether at once. You may use them individually, but you may use one to confirm another. If you look at just the five senses, if I'm walking down the street in Vegas, if I hear something behind me, I may turn around and visually confirm that, that first sense of, of sound that may present a problem to me. Well, infrared and FLIR's sixth sense, our superpower vision does the same thing. Our law enforcement professionals would utilize our superpower vision. They would utilize FLIR's sixth sense to be able to confirm something that they may use another five cents. They may, be, they may look down an alley and they see a shape of something, but they can't tell exactly what's happening. Or they may hear a trash can down an alley get knocked over. Or in this case, they may hear spray paint going on a wall. They can use FLIR superpower vision to ensure that they are themselves protected and ensure that they are saving lives and protecting the community around them. Another, uh, another team of professionals that utilize this is our first responders. Our first responders use FLIR's sixth sense. They use our superpower vision to see through smoke. If you go into a building that's full of smoke, visually, you're actually you're handicapped. But with FLIR's superpower vision, you can see right through that smoke, and you can hear that person, that person screaming, help. You can get to them, and you know exactly where to go to be able to, 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 to save lives, and to be able to use that superpower vision. Now, optical gas imaging is a little bit different. As you noticed a minute ago, with optical gas imaging, I couldn't touch the gas. I couldn't feel it. I couldn't taste it if, like, again, if it tasted bad, SodaStream would have a bit of an issue with, with injecting CO2 in all of our drinks. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't see it. And you can't really smell it. You know, gas, I'm just curious, what do you think methane smells like? Now, it's a, kind of a tough question to ask in some public spaces. But if you actually, methane, as it natively comes out of the ground, methane is completely odorless. It is completely odorless. It is, you need another sense. You need another capabilities to have a superpower vision to be able to visually save lives, to be able to protect the environment, and to be able to even enhance productivity. In these instances, these are all common scenarios that you and I are in on a daily basis. You fill your car up with gas, unless you have an electric vehicle. You actually, uh, uh, t you know, even if you are, you may be at that gas station. This is just the front yard of somebody's uh, residence where there was a gas leak underneath, underneath, the, uh, underneath the sidewalk. FLIR's superpower vision allows you the capability to visually inspect that and to, to be able to ensure that you're putting yourself in, uh, in, in better accord. Now, while we are a sixth sense compared to the other five senses, I will admit that there are other technologies out there that allow you to detect methane. There's LIDAR. You see a couple of LIDAR boosts around here. There are some LIDAR technologies that allow you to detect gases. There are inline gas meters like this. But the challenge with those is those detect gas. They don't tell you what's really happening. They won't tell you where the leak's coming from. Where do you know, need to go to fix it? Which way it's blowing? So in this image behind me, they may say, hey, you have a leak in this blue circle, but what do you really need to do? What do you really need to do to be able to save lives? What do you really need to do to be able to protect the environment? Or to enhance productivity, to keep that gas in the pipeline. Now, one of those technologies that's uh, a, bit, a bit newer to the market and popular that FLIR, FLIR's not involved in, but it's satellites. They actually have satellites with, with lasers on them that, be, that can detect gas. But the challenge that I see with those is what I define as resolution. The resolution to know where that leak is coming from. That resolution may be at a city level, or maybe it's at a basin level, or maybe it's at a building level like the convention center here in Vegas. Now, this is just simulation, but in this case, it just says, I have a leak somewhere in the parking lot. That's a bit challenging to know what danger I'm in. That's a bit challenging for you to know where do you need to go to stop that leak. Another technology that was very, that's popular this year, that was very popular last year at CES, are drones. Now, our resolution of this technology may get you to the parking lot. A drone is going to have a little bit better resolution. It will tell you that it's the white sedan in the middle of the parking lot. But you still don't know exactly what's happening. 
There are a lot of technologies on drones today, and FLIR even has a technology that will help you in this situation. We actually have a foregas, uh, it's a sniffer type of technology, a, a gas monitor that you can fly into an area and know what type of gases are present. Now think about that for our first responders. They gotta sometimes suit up and walk a half a mile in these big old these big suits. Wouldn't it be nice for them to know what type of suit I need to put on, and and where I need to go, and what type of technology I might need when I get in there? So we can actually do that later on this year. FLIR will be coming out with an optical gas imaging payload specifically for methane detection on a drone. Now, what are you going to get with something like that? What are you going to get with, with, with FLIR's optical gas imaging technology? You would be able to know where the leak is. I would know it's at the driver's side window of this vehicle, not it's just somewhere near the vehicle. I would be able to know exactly where the, where the danger is and exactly where I need to go to fix this. Later on this month, we're going to launch our first ever autonomous solution, our first ever fixed mount solution for optical gas imaging. Now, a lot of these pieces of components aren't like a car that's moving around and it may move around in a parking lot. A lot of them are fixed components in the oil and gas industry. Wouldn't it be nice if you could just simply monitor that 24-7 so you always know, is that community in danger? So you always know, am I protecting the environment? Am I being a good environmental neighbor? And you would always know, am I enhancing productivity? Am I keeping that gas in the pipeline? In this case, you would see the blue, the blue uh, triangles. I could be able to inspect that piece of equipment 24-7 and always know. Now, if we look at what's happening in the world today, as I mentioned, communities and industry are combining, in particular with the oil and gas. These cities are growing out into areas where the industry may have been for years. These industries may need to access the natural resources to support that community by entering that community. And in this case, this is uh, just an image from Colorado of what it may have looked like a few years ago. Today, it may look a little bit more like this. And this is just happening. We're neighbors and we need to figure out a better way. And FLIR feels as though for a smart city or a FLIR city initiative, we have a great solution to help these people detect these, save lives, protect the environment, and even enhance productivity. If I take some specific examples, here's a, uh, a, a suburb just north of Denver. Now, this is just a common suburb that you'd see in America today. You've got neighborhoods. You've got golf courses. You've got lakes with a little walking trail around that. Very common. But if I take this exact same aerial image and look at it in an oil and gas perspective, this is what it might look like. These are the oil and the gas wells that are in that same scenario, that are in that same aerial view. Now, if I put those together, this shows where that industry and community combine, where that industry and community are aligned, and we hope that we have a solution that allows the smart city initiatives to be able to find these leaks, to be able to save lives, protect the environment, and enhance productivity. Some other specific examples, this is one of the top 10 metropolitan areas in the United States. And if you'll notice the, uh, the brown rectangle, that's just a gas well pad. This is right in the middle of a large metropolitan area. And if I zoom in a little bit on the red rectangle, what's happening? From the back door of this neighbor to this well pad or to the equipment, the first piece of equipment to this well pad, you're looking at around 150 feet. Just think about that. That's a high schooler's baseball throw. They can, it's that close, and this is just where the industry had to get into the community to be able to access these natural resources to be able to support that community. Wouldn't it be nice if we had a technology that could alarm the company and alarm the community if there is a scenario that needs to be fixed? Is there, if there is a scenario that it needs to be fixed to save lives, just to protect the environment, or even just to make sure that that gas stays in the pipeline? FLIR has that technology. Another example is in a, is in a, a large U.S. city. This is an example where the, the community grew up around a refinery. Now, as I zoom in on the rectangle there, that floating roof tank is less than 80 feet from that dwelling. The communities and the industries are combining, they're, they're colliding, and you would have images like this that you could be able to visually inspect where there's gas floating from the top of that roof tank to be able to, to visually see that and protect that, protect that uh, city. Now, what do the companies say? 
What are these oil and gas organizations saying? They're saying the right things. They are actually making public statements with their executive level team. They're making public sta statements in their annual reports. One of them said that they intend to lower upstream oil, uh, greenhouse gas, GHG is greenhouse gas emissions by 5 to 10 percent. Another one was a bit more open and they just said they're going to take action to minimize methane from entering the atmosphere. One of the largest oil and gas organizations said that they announced that they are going to uh, have a program to reduce methane emissions across the United States. And some of them have specific metrics. Some of them have specific metrics like we are going to target to maintain methane emission levels below 0.2%. Again, they are trying to do, they want to be better environmental stewards. Many of them need the technologies. They need the technology partners. They need to, to enter into that smart city or enter into a FLIR city initiative. They're not doing this alone. We're working with them, but they're joining in coalitions. They're joining in public coalitions where they have eight of the eight CEOs from the top oil and gas companies in the world signing on the dotted line saying that they want to do what they can to be better environmental stewards and to be able to do this. The Oil and Gas Climate Initiative is 13 of the largest oil and gas companies across the, actual, across the world, from Asia, with headquarters in Asia, operations in Africa, in Europe, and all over the Americas. They're doing this. What do they want to do? They're looking for partners. They're looking for people that may have superpower vision. They're looking for companies that can help them save lives. They want to be better environmental stewards and protect the environment. And they're looking for partners that can keep that gas in the pipeline and be able to allow these companies to have enhanced productivity. Now, I thank you for your time today. If there are any questions, I'll be willing to fill those. Or are you just waiting for Jake to come back up and give away some free cameras? <laughs> All right, Jake, if he's around here. Thank you very much for your time. We will be around if you have any questions to answer this uh, to be able to uh, help educate you a little bit more on optical gas imaging. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Craig.